Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. A few announcements for the good of our ministry together. Um, as you know, we are not having our midweek Lent services this year, but we are releasing a video every Wednesday morning. Uh, one of our members is uh, taking just an ordinary object uh, that we live with every day, uh, like coins or shoes, uh, and talking about how that um, helps them understand the meaning of the cross. So thank you to Charles Meyer who did uh, last week's On the Cross. Uh, this coming week will be uh, Jim Hughes. We'll talk about coins, uh, so be sure and uh, tune in to watch that. Also, we continue to reach out to our community. We had about 300 Meals on Wheels food bags that went out last week. Uh, this week, we have about 600 medical bags that will be going to the local hospitals. Uh, they put all those bags together, uh, but they need to be boxed up. So after the service, if you would like to help, all you need to do is head over to the uh, education building. It's the first room on the right. There's a bunch of boxes that have to be put together, and then there's 10 of those bags that go in each box. Uh, it'll take about 10 or 15 minutes if you would like to, to help us. Those will be delivered uh, tomorrow. Also, I will be doing a First Communion class for anyone, uh, kids or grandkids, who are not uh, currently receiving communion. Uh, please just call the church office, let me know you're interested in that class, and we'll get you on the list. Also, we have some uh, food pantry uh, uh, needs. Uh, it's called the Market Depot now, it used to be called the Greenhouse. They are looking for macaroni and cheese and any uh, of the rice mixes uh, in the bag. Um, put those on your grocery list, uh, bring them to the church, and we will uh, deliver them for you. Also, I want to thank you for your continued generous offerings to our mission together. Uh, we're not passing the offering plate anymore, but there is an offering box on the back wall that you can put your offering uh, as we reach out in Christ's love to this community together. Um, as we uh, light the candles uh, here within the sanctuary, if you're at home, I invite you to light a candle as well. Let us welcome the Holy Spirit into our worship time together. Opening litany based on Psalm 119. 
O Lord, listen to my cry. Rescue me as you promise. I have wandered away like a lost sheep. Come and find me. Please do not give up on me. Welcome me once again into your loving grace. Lent, a season of reflection, reevaluation, new beginnings. A time to recognize God's grace in our lives, to find ways to let that realization sink in and take root, drawing closer to God as we are changed by His love. In this season, we should give, give of ourselves, our time, money, possessions. Giving helps us to see better the needs of those around us. It brings to light those things that may have too high a priority in our lives, it helps us to separate what we need from what we want, stripping away the things that keep us separated from one another and God. We should fast. It helps us to be reminded of the need for God to fill us, whether food or social media, your phone or computer. Fasting allows us to physically feel the ongoing spiritual needs of the soul. It helps us to see the truth that only God can truly satisfy. We should pray. It slows us down, focuses us on God. It enables us to be pulled away from our grip on the world and everything we think it can give us and moves us closer to seeing God in the midst of it all. God is inviting us into this holy season, wanting us to be free from all the obstacles that keep us from His fullness. May we allow ourselves to be stripped down and cleansed so that we may come to understand more powerfully the love of God and be made new in His righteousness and alive in His grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us come clean with God. Merciful Father, you sent Jesus Christ to seek and save the lost. We confess that we have strayed away. We thought we knew best, questioning your wisdom and goodness. Have mercy on us, O God. Welcome us back into your loving care. Beloved of God, hear the good news. God celebrates you coming to your senses and returning home to the Father's love. Your sins are forgiven. There is joy in the presence of God's angels when sinners repent. Thanks be to God. Did that grace appear? 
Chiseled like snow The sun forbear to shine But God who called me here below Will be forever mine Will be Let us pray. O oh God, the manner in which you lovingly care for us proves that we matter to you. You go out of your way to bless us. Lead us back when we have gone astray. Clothe us with garments of your grace and welcome us to your table of mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Listen for the word of God. From the 15th chapter of the Gospel of Luke. Tax collectors and other notorious sinners often came to listen to Jesus teach. This made the Pharisees and teachers of religious law complain that he was associating with such sinful people, even eating with them. So Jesus told them this story. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will he do? Won't he leave the ninety-nine others in the wilderness and go to search for the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he will joyfully carry it home on his shoulders? When he arrives, he will call together his friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. In the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over ninety-nine others who are righteous and haven't strayed away. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Won't she light a lamp and sweep the entire house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she will call on her friends and neighbors and say, Rejoice with me because I have found my lost coin. In the same way, there is joy in the presence of God's angels when even one sinner repents. To illustrate the point further, Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now, before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land. And there he wasted all his money in wild living. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land, and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him, and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, At home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare. And here I am dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. So he returned home to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet, and kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast, for this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. 
Meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house, and he asked one of the servants what was going on. Your brother is back, he was told, and your father has killed the fat calf. We are celebrating because of his safe return. The older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. His father came out and begged him, but he replied, All these years I've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me. And in all that time, you never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friends. Yet when this son of yours comes back after squandering your money on prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the fat calf. His father said to him, Look, dear son, you have always stayed by me, and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day, for your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, but now he is found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A young husband's pregnant wife craved a specific kind of ice cream, but there was a problem. They couldn't find that specific type of ice cream in the small town where they lived. And so at least once a week, month after month, this young husband would drive 30 minutes to the next town to secure that craved dessert. That's crazy, I thought to myself. And you know what else is crazy? Are these three stories that Jesus tells us today. A shepherd cares for a hundred sheep, and one sheep, unbeknownst to the shepherd, wanders away. What does the shepherd do? He leaves his other 99 behind, unsupervised in the dangerous wilderness, and he goes searching for that one lost sheep. Is it just me, or does that sound like a, a crazy, unwise decision to you too? Or a woman has 10 coins, each coin worth about a day's wage, but she loses one of those coins. She turns the house totally upside down until she finds it. That sounds smart to me. But then when she finds it, she calls all of her family and friends, inviting them to this huge party to celebrate that she has found her one lost coin. But wouldn't such a party cost at least 10 coins? She would have nothing left to live on. That's crazy. We are left wondering what in the world do these parables have to do with God's love? But then we have this third parable about this son who is tired of playing by the rules, and so he rudely demands his portion of the inheritance before his dad's death, mind you. He leaves home and he wastes it all on wine, women, and song. He quickly runs out of money, begins to starve, and then he recollects how good he had it back at home. In that moment, the young son finally recognizes how much he needs his father. The young son knows he must return home, and so he begins to nervously formulate his I'm sorry speech, praying that his father will forgive him for his unforgivable behavior. But to the young son's amazement, he is warmly welcomed back home by his father with this huge, long hug and a welcome home party. I'm left asking, is this dad crazy? Has he forgotten that his son looked him in the eyes and said, Dad, I wish you would drop dead at this moment so that I could finally get my inheritance? What in the world do these crazy stories teach us about God's relationship with us? After I heard the young husband tell me about driving 30 minutes to secure ice cream for his pregnant wife, I couldn't help but remark, doesn't that sound a little crazy to you? And I will never forget his response. 
He said, my wife matters to me, and I would do anything to show her that I love her. And there's the nugget of truth that cracks open the meaning of these three crazy parables that Jesus tells. The lost sheep mattered to the shepherd, and so the shepherd stops everything and he goes searching until he finds that beloved sheep. The lost coin mattered to that woman, and so she turns her entire house upside down until she finds it. And her family and friends matter to her too, and so she willingly uses all of her money so that she can celebrate them. The disrespectful wayward son matters to the father. Daily, the father waits on that front porch, hoping and praying that one day his son will come to his senses, return home, so that they can joyfully celebrate his homecoming. To fully understand these three parables, it's essential to not miss the very reason why Jesus tells them in the first place. The Pharisees criticized Jesus for sharing a meal with the worst sinners. Jesus spends time with those who the Pharisees deem unworthy, not worth it. Jesus then tells these three stories to declare a very powerful truth, that everyone, everyone matters to God. Even the the worst of sinners matter to God, which is good news for all of us sinners, that you matter to God. Despite your failures, despite your faults, still we matter to God. And that's all that matters, Jesus tells us this day. Repeat after me, I matter to God. I matter to God. We need to repeat that often because there are so many Pharisee-type voices out there who will attempt to tell us that we are not worthy, that we're not worth it. But the voice of Jesus always tells you that you matter, that you are loved, that you are incredibly precious to Jesus. You don't have to be anything special in the eyes of the world in order to matter to Jesus. Because to Jesus, you are worth it. You are God's masterpiece, Jesus reminds us, created in love by the divine creator. Does God agree with everything that we do? Certainly not. Do we disappoint God by our sinful ways? Most assuredly. And yet, in the midst of all of that, God never rejects us. God constantly acts mercifully towards us. God knows we are all guilty, but God chooses to save us anyway by sending his Son, Jesus Christ. Of all the options that Jesus had available to him, Jesus chooses love, because you and I matter to God. Through the holy waters of baptism, God has claimed you and me as his beloved children, and nothing can ever change that. God celebrates you. God longs to be a part of your life. In fact, the lost sheep parable proclaims during those times when we wander off jesus stops at nothing in order to find us so that we can be brought back into the love of the father you are worth searching for jesus declares when you get lost when i get lost jesus seeks us out and then he delights in lifting us up gently placing us upon his shoulders and carrying us safely home. The words of that young husband still echo in my ears. My wife matters to me, and I would do anything in order to show her that I love her. In the same way, you matter to God. And God, too, goes to extraordinary measures to prove God's love for us. In fact, God goes so far as to willingly offer his very own son upon the cross to prove 
how much he loves you. God believes that you were worth dying for. Do you want to know how much you matter this day? Then simply look to the cross. Jesus says, I love you this much. I care about you this much, Jesus says. You matter to me this much. By Jesus spreading out his arms on the cross and dying in your place, Jesus proclaims that God believes that you were worth saving. To remind us of this good news, each week Jesus throws this big celebration party for us in your honor, just as the dad did when the prodigal son finally made his way back home. We refer to this big party, this big feast, as Holy Communion. Jesus personally invites you to come and dine with him at his holy table, despite, despite the mistakes that you have made. And through bread and wine, Jesus offers you tangible reminders of God's pursuing love. And as we taste that bread and that wine, we can't help but picture Jesus running toward us, arms open wide, declaring that you are worth it, that you were worth dying for. Grateful for this crazy, unrelenting love that God shows to you and to me, let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. As we lift up our joys and concerns to the Lord in prayer, each petition will conclude saving God. Please respond, shower your healing grace upon us. Let us pray. O oh God, you've revealed to us that the church matters by sending your own son Jesus to die on our behalf. We give you thanks for the salvation you have secured for us through Christ's death and resurrection. Keep our eyes fixed on the cross as we make our Lenten journey. Saving God. Shower your healing grace upon us. Holy God, teach us to cherish every person we encounter in daily life, knowing that every person matters to you. Help us to see in each other a beloved child of God. Saving God. Shower your healing grace upon us. Curb our stubbornness when we demand our own way. Don't give up on us, Lord. Remove our jealousy from our hearts when we see others being celebrated. Grant us eyes to see the many blessings you give to all of us on a daily basis. Saving God. Shower your healing grace upon us. Walk alongside parents whose children have run away. Protect wayward children in times of trouble. Bring loved ones back together. Heal hearts of resentment and mistrust. Saving God. Shower your healing grace upon us. Watch over everyone who is traveling for spring break. Grant fun and refreshment and a safe homecoming. Saving God. Shower your healing grace upon us. Use the goodie bags we distributed to hospitals to remind the local medical staff that we value their dedication to our community during these pandemic days. Work through healthcare workers around the world to bring healing to anyone who is suffering and who longs for wholeness. We pray especially for Jan, Muriel, Martha and Tammy, Cindy, Annette, Penny, Billy and Leo, Mahmoud and Amy, Dolores, Carrie, Barbara, Mary, Randy, the family of Markey, and everyone we now name. Saving God, shower your healing grace upon us. Abundantly bless our church friends celebrating a birthday this week. Leah Irvin and Peg Barnes. Strengthen the bonds of love between Lance and Dana Nesbitt as they celebrate their wedding anniversary. Saving God. Shower your healing grace upon us. In this moment of silence, we entrust our private concerns into your loving care.
saving God, shower your healing grace upon us. Though we have stood at the gravesides of our loved ones, we believe they still matter to you. Give us faith to believe that you have welcomed them into the gates of heaven with open arms, saving God. Shower your healing grace upon us. Accept the petitions we offer to you, and through your grace, grant us those things you see that we need. For the sake of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. In mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his Holy Supper. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated.